Hi everybody, this is Carolyn Cindy from Trunks to Trays and um, first of all we want to give a shout out to um, the Florence County Library for asking us uh, to do a segment for the month of September. So um, we take tree trunks and turn them into bowls and trays and other pieces that you might use for uh, like low country foil trays, hog trays, that sort of thing. So we're just going to dive right into this. This is just um, your plain Jane video off of a cell phone and we're not uh, skilled at this, but we are going to start and give it our best. This is my husband, Carol, and he's going to tell you a little bit about how we got started uh, in this business about six years ago. Okay. After my mother died, I, uh, I got a, the old dough bowl that my grandmother had, and it had a hole in the bottom of it, and I wanted to try to search for someone to see if I could get it fixed. So I saw um, Mr. Buddy Davis, he's an old friend, and because he, he does dough bowls and stuff, and I figured, okay, Mr. Buddy could help me fix this thing. So I stopped by one day and he said, you can't fix that. He said, but I can show you how to build one. And I said, okay, that'd be great. He said, get some wood. So, and he told me what to get and how to get it fixed. So I went and got some Tupelo, a piece of Tupelo, um, and, and got a saw with a portable sawmill to help me saw it. And that's kind of how we got started, truly, with just yes. um, inheriting something and Carol's interest in, honestly, learning a new skill. So, yeah. um, anyway. I, it's not, you know, retirement is not what it's cranked up to be. So, I have to do something. You have to have something to wake up, to look forward to doing the next day. So, um, I figured this would be, <laughs> this would be. What I wanted to do, because I always wanted to do it. So, anyway, it's not work, it's a hobby. And just um, as part of our history, uh, Carol farmed for 38 years and had a successful career in that and then retired. And we did some um, repurposing of furniture and wood for a while, and it was great. And um, you'll see me in just a minute. I'm Cindy, and I'm a nurse practitioner, and I work at NUSC. But anyway, that's part of our other history uh, besides what we do here with uh, Trunks to Trays. So um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the history of the bowls and uh, we're just going to change places here and um, change this camera and go from there and see, see if we can kind of do this. So I'm going to occupy the chair and I want to start out by saying that Carol mentioned that he went and got, what did you say? A piece of wood. A piece of wood. So I'm, I'm, gonna, imp I'm gonna prove to you that I am not embellishing this story. So I came home one day and this, can you zoom in on this? Or get, get this? Or back up? That's it. That's it. So yeah. this is the piece of wood that Carol came home with. So literally a trailer full um, of wood. And so needless to say, um, I think I was shocked. And you know, so in my loving wife voice, I said, oh honey, wow, this is, this is great. Um, that conversation did not go like that at all. Um, this ginormous trailer was in our yard. Fortunately, it didn't stay like that. As Carol mentioned, uh, we hired a, a gentleman that has a portable sawmill, and this is what those uh, stumps ended up looking like after that. Um, just to kind of give you an idea, that's how big those uh, tree butts are. And this is the portable sawmill. So anyway, that's sort of the process of procuring the wood and um, just how we get to the point before we actually create a bowl or before Carol actually carves a bowl. Just a little bit about the history of a dough bowl, uh, which is what Carol um, inherited. Years ago, many years ago, it was very customary for a groom 
to carve a bowl for his bride. And he would um, choose the piece of wood and obviously do everything by hand and would make a dough bowl. That would be something that would be used in their home and it would be his gift to his bride and um, would be something that was utilized uh, in their household. And then the tradition normally was for the eldest daughter of the house to inherit the bowl later on. So that just kind of as a history of, of making uh, dough bowls. So in today's world, um, some people still make homemade biscuits and we sell a lot of bowls and stuff for that. But we also do a lot of uh, low country boil trays, charcuterie trays, uh, trays just for home decor, salads and just just whatever else uh, you would like to use them for so um, we are going to sort of move around again and we can't show you the entire process but we've got kind of a makeshift um, process in here to show you how we take that piece of wood or how carol takes that piece of wood and starts from something rough and ends up with a final product so anyway um, we'll get everything in place here and just kind of go from there. Again, we um, are trunks to trays and just um, for your information, we are located in Hemingway, South Carolina. We live out in the country in a home that we have lived in for 41 years. And although our phone number is not on here, we will provide you with that at the end of this um, presentation. So I'm going to swing around here and just kind of pan over to this table, which is where Carol is at. And I'm gonna let him tell you a little bit about um, how he goes about crafting a bowl. And normally this would be done outside. Yes, on my work table. On his work table. <laughs> this is not... In a very dirty, dusty area. Yeah, yeah. So. Okay, this is a blank piece of wood and I'll look at it to see about what can be made out of it. So um, I'll take this dimensions and what kind of wood it is, but usually um, it, you can't make a hog tray out of this piece. So I'll, I'll just, this is the simple way to do it. I'll turn around and I'll draw a bow out of it. And so I'll do that on both ends and and I determine whether I want to put handles on it. So I'm allowing room to put handles on this one. So, and then this is, this is the way it starts off. And yeah. people often ask Carol, you know, how, how do you decide uh, what to, to make? And part of it is determined um, on the size of the wood, mm -hmm. the shape of the log. Now, obviously this is a small piece that we just kind of drug in here and then just kind of what he sees also, do you agree with the, the markings where you might get the, yes. the prettiest markings um, in a piece? So this next one. This was, this was spotted maple, and this next one is a piece of cherry. It's already drawn out, and this is the process. It's drawn out, this is no handles. It's drawn out, and then I'll score it, and then I'll take a, I'll take a chisel, and, okay, this is the piece that's already dug out, and I'm gonna show you how, you know, it, it, it happens. We'll take a chisel. I've already chiseled this out. And we'll chisel it out. And then, after I do this, then I'll take a, a grinder, four and a half, quarter inch, half inch grinder, and I'll shape it up and smooth it up a little bit and get sanders and get everything to look like this. Now this and is, this the, is this. the chiseling part truly is done 100% by hand. We do not use a lathe. Um, now obviously we have to use um, some power tools to, to cut these pieces down and that sort of thing. But the chiseling part and the drawing out is you know, whatever Carol sees fit to do. And then again, this chiseling is all done with just your plain Jane hammer and, and chisel. And this, this piece here that I just chiseled out is, um, is... A piece of cedar. Yes. And it smells wonderful in here, yeah. you guys. 
And this is a piece of black walnut already dug out and shaped on the ends and is ready for me to cut the wastewater off the ends and the sides. And then it, this is a piece of spalter maple also. And it's ready for the finished sanding. And I don't do the finished sanding. My wife does. So anyway, <laughs> sanding. So anyway, and she'll, this is before she gets the whole to the sand and she'll send it about five or six more times or maybe more it's going to get slick right and, and um we again started from this carol decided on the shape scored it cut out some pieces hand chiseled got it close to being finished um, here's one that is ready for me and you might say, well, that looks great, um, but they're actually kind of rough, so um, it's, it's not ready for use. And then this um, is a piece of maple, as Carol said. And this then, is Tupelo. Yeah, the, the small one is Tupelo. So people want to know, what do we put on them? And the only thing that we put on the wood is just plain old mineral oil from your drugstore, your favorite dollar store, and then we use something called bees oil which is a combination of beeswax and mineral oil this wood that you see here that is not finished and this is the same wood we do not stain this this uh the oil and the beeswax just brings out the color and um it's beautiful um people ask us what our favorite part of this is what would you say carol all in new wax. Uh, yeah, I was going to say the same thing. So it is just amazing to see the the characteristics. And this one's got some little marks in it from maybe some beetles or bugs or just whatever. Um, this one does too, as you can see. But to take something like this and to take something like that, yeah, and end up with a product like this, um, we just thoroughly enjoy it so it's, it's not work it's it's a pleasure it's a pleasure it truly is so we've got some pieces to show you so you can kind of get an idea of um how it is at the end and so do you want to give us a tour and we'll do this quickly because um we know a video can get long this is a low country ball tray or either barbecue tray not a whole hog, but just a barbecue tray, and it's spalted maple. And spalting simply is a process where something has fed off of the wood, either while it's alive or dead, and it just, uh, these are the stress marks that it, it, it makes. And both of these, I believe, um, now, this are is, This is a dark piece of tupelo. Um, it's just, it just happened to be a dark piece of tupelo. But right, and there, Tupelo is also known as black gum, and supposedly there are, I think, nine varieties, and so this is Tupelo, Tupelo. but so is this, and so it's, um, we tell people it's kind of like skin color, um, you know, some of us are very light, some are medium toned, some are dark, uh, some of us have freckles and little, maybe lumps and bumps, but um, we all have our different characteristics, and, and so does wood. Um, these are more Tupelo. Tupelo Locusha Ball Trays. Alright, and we're just going to pan around here real quick and just give you, um, I guess, an idea of the different sizes. So this we, is a Tupelo, and it's a small oval, uh -huh. and this is a small Locusha Ball Tray. It's made out of spalted maple. This is um, spalted maple also. And this is got, spalted magnolia. So it is gorgeous. And, and I want to just zoom in on this just to see just the beauty in this. So we, um, and we never cease to be amazed at, at the beauty in this. Um, that is something we do not tire of at all. Spalted maple also in Tupelo. And this is uh, cypress. Yes. So these are the trees, the trees with the knees. Um, that you see growing in um, water. So I think we're near the end. 
And um, there's another small tupelo. I mean, a small to maple. And a small to maple. And this is a tupelo. And this is another cypress. And this is a tupelo oval, but it's got some hardwood in it. And this beautiful characteristic. And, and that's one of the other things that, that we love is just to see just the um, individual characteristics of, of the pieces that, that Carol um, is able to carve. And so, again, uh, as we come to the end of this, thank you so much for watching the video. Um, again, to the Florence County Library, thank you so much for asking us to do this. Um, the shop that we're in is in our backyard, so um, we um, sell by appointment, and I'm going to give you a phone number. It's 843-933-0310. So if you just call that number, uh, we would just be more than happy to have you come, take a look, and see what we have. Thank you guys so much and have a great day and stay safe. Bye-bye.